1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's go down here to verse 18. For the preaching of the cross, everybody say the cross. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. The cross is foolishness to the world. How many know that uh, this is April Fool's Day today, and, and uh, you're a fool if you're not in church? No. Uh, it, well, uh, it, the cross is foolishness to the world, and uh, they they don't understand it. Uh, April Fool's. You know, I've I've. <clears throat> I've gotten Kathleen with pranks over the years, and uh, uh, good ones. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a master at it. I'm, I'm sorry. This morning, I was going to put lima beans in all the eggs for the kids, and they, they wouldn't let me. I, I, I was going to put lima beans and broccoli and some spinach and, and just, you know, and, and, but no. But how many know, uh, you know, this is, this is the first time since 1956 that the two things lined up uh april uh first and and easter um uh, and and the next one won't, ha won't happen until two 2029 so so uh maybe this is a day where we better realize that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that perish to the unbeliever the cross they don't understand it it's foolishness but to those that believe come on those that believe it is the power of God. How many know there's still power in the blood? And when you realize there's power in the blood, this is, whoo, I'll tell you what, this is an exciting day that we can rejoice because Jesus has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Turn with me over here to Hebrews. How many know he drinks coffee? It says Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and let's go down here to verse 24 glory to God Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 says uh, now notice this it says and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of, of uh, sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. How many know the blood speaks? Did you hear what I said? The blood speaks, and it speaks better things. Now, Abel, his blood cried out in the beginning. When he was murdered by Cain, his blood cried out, and, and really what it cried out was vengeance, and it cried out curse. And how many know that Jesus' blood cries out forgiveness and his blood cries out blessing? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The blood of Jesus has made a way where there was no way. And the blood speaks, and the blood still speaks today. You know, in the DNA of blood at a crime scene, the murderer can already be gone. I mean, he can be in another state. And that blood is still speaking and, and literally can identify him. The blood speaks volumes. <laughs> In the DNA of the blood spiritually, it speaks volumes. The blood of Jesus is on the mercy seat of heaven right now, speaking of better things, of the things of this covenant of what we have received. And we have received the blessing of the Lord. Gospel means good news. Gospel means good news. And I'm talking about precious promises, not just getting to heaven, but I'm talking about every precious promise in this covenant that God has paid for. We have today we have it it is ours and the blood is still speaking and it is still decreeing the the promises and the better things hallelujah you know we can we can plead the blood you say well what do you mean plead the blood what, what does that mean plead the blood well if you went up before a judge and and the judge said uh you know you're here we think you're guilty we think you're unworthy What's your plea? 
The only thing a Christian can plead, you can't plead, well, I was a good person. I, I you know, I helped an old lady across the street one time and, and I, you know, and no, <laughs> that's not going to work. What's going to, what's really going to work is the fact that you plead the blood. You plead the blood. When you say the blood of Jesus, he paid the price, he made the way, he did it all, he died in your place, come on, and by dying in your place, his blood paid the price for your sins, hallelujah, amen. So we plead the blood, we speak the blood, and, and we, we're, when you speak the blood, what you're really doing is you're speaking what the blood accomplished. You're saying the blood of Jesus accomplished everything I needed so that I could have life and that life more abundantly. Hallelujah. How many know there's still power in the blood? <laughs> Amen. You know, when I think of it, uh, most people before that, you know, before they got saved, they had blood type B negative. Now, how many know when you get saved, you get blood type JC positive? <laughs> Amen. You, you, I mean, you switch around. You start believing that you got a reason to wake up in the morning. You got a reason to run this race. You, you know that when you get the blood type G, you can, you've had a blood transfusion. You're no longer blood type B negative. Get the word. Notify your face. You're no longer B type negative. You are J.C. positive. And when you get that blood of Jesus, whoo, glory to God. When you start getting in the word, you start finding out what belongs to you in the authority of the believer. You start rising up in that word, mm, you're going to see what God has paid for. And it's good. Amen. Well, let's go back here to the book of Genesis. I want to read the whole Bible this morning. I'm just kidding. Calm down. Genesis chapter 2. And um, let's go down here, verse 15. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, and let's go down here to verse 15. Now, notice what it says. And the Lord God took the man and put him into a garden of Eden. Now, the word Eden means abundance. To dress it. And to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree, everybody say tree, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. Now, how many know that uh, they took hold <laughs> of that and the curse came on them? Now, the curse goes through the bloodline. The curse has gone through the bloodline all the way through every generation from Adam all the way to you. And they were told, don't, don't eat of that tree. The tree of the knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. The tree of the, how many know that worldly knowledge puffeth up? It puffs you up. When you get a hold of the wrong knowledge, it's going to cause pride, and pride was the original sin. And so if you're getting a hold of the wrong stuff, <laughs> how many know God wanted you to get a hold of the tree of life? Now, the tree of life, Adam was going to be groomed in that. Eve was going to be groomed in that. They were going to learn of the wisdom of God. Proverbs says, wisdom is a tree of life life. And so when you realize that, that God had planned that we would walk in his wisdom, not the knowledge of the world, not uh, good and evil. Somebody say, well, Pastor Jeff, what's wrong with, with good? I know evil's wrong, but what's wrong with good? Well, good is not necessarily truth. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. If, if, you, if you're going after uh, a what is good you know they they said should we do what is good and stone this woman and jesus said he that has no sin cast the first stone jesus didn't answer with what was good from the law he answered with truth 
see, you need a little element of good to deceive somebody. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to join a cult. No, you, you wake up in the morning, and, you know, there was something good. There was something that caused you to want to go down that road. There was some good that led you into the evil. There was something that tempted you. Are you hearing me? So God said, I didn't want you to touch of the good and evil. I didn't want you to touch of the wrong knowledge. And they partook of the wrong tree. Are you seeing that? So they're eating of the wrong tree. Uh, Adam had the same blood as God. You say, how do you know that? Well, he was made in his image, and in and, and the literal Hebrew is an exact duplicate. He was made in the same image after the same likeness as God. He was made with God's blood. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know the animals were not made with God's blood? Adam was made with God's blood. Adam walked like God. He walked, hallelujah, as a child of God. And that blood that he had was sinless until he ate of the wrong knowledge. He ate of the wrong tree. And when he ate of the wrong tree, the blood was tainted. The blood was no longer the blood of God. It had a curse upon it. And through the bloodline, that curse has continued. Turn with me over here to uh, Psalms chapter 1. How many love the Word of God? Glory to God. Psalms 1. We're going to read all the Psalms. No, I'm kidding. Psalms, <laughs> Psalms 1. And let's go down here. Uh, let's just start here in uh, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his delight is in the law. Now that word law is the word Torah, which literally was was the word of that day so literally you could say his delight is in the word how many know our delight is in the word of god but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night how many know that joshua chapter one says the same thing and he shall be like a tree <laughs> and he shall be like a tree come on somebody if you get a hold of the word of God, if you plant that seed inside of you, Mark chapter 4 says that the parable of the sower, if you plant the word, you're going to develop the word, you're going to develop the tree. If you get in the word both day and night, you'll prosper and have good success. If you get in the word, that word will develop in you and you shall become a tree. Come on, somebody. Notice what it says. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall, wither, shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. You get in the word, the word will tell you what to do. The word will give you the wisdom of the tree of life. Hope deferred maketh the heart weak. The word sick is weak. When you get weak, oh my goodness. Hope deferred maketh the heart weak, but when, not if, when the desire comes, it is a tree of life, it says in the Proverbs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Reading and hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. Hearing and, and reading the word of God causes you to become a tree, a tree of Life, Come on, somebody. Do you know that Noah, God said to Noah, he said, I want you to go, and he says, I want you to take of, of the trees. I want you to get a hold of a tree. I want you to get a hold of some gopher wood. I want you to cut, and, and he's specifically gopher wood. I want you to cut down those trees, and I want you to take of that gopher wood, and I will cause you salvation from the flood. Come on, somebody. 
and from those trees he made the ark and Noah was saved from the in his family from the flood hallelujah you go and you look at, at this uh, the 12 tribes of Israel the word tribe literally means branches <laughs> it's interchangeable tribe or branches so really they are the 12 branches of the fig tree come on somebody now when you see that we are right now 70 years from 1948 come on somebody a generation is 70 to 80 years well in 1948 Israel moved back into the land 1948 it's exactly 70 years this year from that event now I'm not saying we're going up today but get ready come on somebody hallelujah now I believe we're in the last days I believe it could be another 10 years it could be more but it, I'll tell you what this 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 is it's winding down and we have a job to do come on when the Lord told me to start a church here in Rockwall I said you know Lord I, I'm, I'm I'm booked I, I'm preaching 52 uh, 50 out of 52 weeks a year all over the country and doing this that and the other and the Lord said to me he says I'm building my house for the last days he said there are going to be people coming in from every direction. There are going to be people coming in to find me in the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. And I'm strategically placing people in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. We are the generation. Come on, somebody. that will usher in the second coming. When you look at the fig tree, Jesus, he cursed the fig tree. Now you say, well, <laughs> Jesus walking happily to find some fruit, some figs on a fig tree. It wasn't time for figs. But how many know he was expecting it to line up with his words. And he came up to that fig tree. And because it had no fruit, he spoke to it and it was cursed. Well, how many know the fig tree represents Israel? And how many know at the time it had no fruit? Well, this isn't our time. Oh, yes, it was. It was their time because the Messiah had come. Come on. Glory to God. Amen. When you look at um, Moses, <laughs> they all had these staffs branches the 12 tribes they all had a branch they had you can call it a rod you call it a staff they had their names carved in it in it uh, the name of the tribe the name of the branch manasseh uh, judah uh, you know on and on and on uh, levi where's levi <laughs> amen hey, all the different branches had uh the name carved in there uh moses took his branch of his tree and held it up high and the waters parted in the Red Sea. Come on, somebody. You think it's by accident he lifted up that branch? You believe it's by accident that he held up that branch, that it literally caused the Red Sea to part? Let me tell you something. There's still power in that tree. Amen. Glory be to God. You look at Aaron's rod, Aaron's staff, his branch. Aaron's branch, of all the different ones, how many know he was set apart as a priestly tribe, a priestly branch? And that branch of Aaron budded. Now, it cannot begin to have flowers. <laughs> when it's not connected into anything i mean it's at this point it's just a piece of wood it's it's his staff it's his the rod but it begins to bud and be born again how many know from the priesthood of levi hallelujah 
came. The opportunity to be born again. And they took that staff that had flowers on it now and they put it into the Ark of the Covenant right next to the 12 12 <laughs> the Ten Commandments at first there was 15 but one of the things broke never mind um, <laughs> you have to have seen that movie anyway <laughs> hallelujah how many know that uh, there's something about the tree. There's something about that tree. There's something about that tree that's gone through every generation coming up to our generation. Let's go over here to uh, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, and let's realize some things. Go down here to verse 30. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. And where shall we liken the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God. It says, um, or with what comparison shall we compare it? Comparing the kingdom of God. It is like a grain of mustard seed. Now, they have just, they've just explained the whole parable of the sower and how seed is the logos or seed is the word. And if you plant the word in you, the word will develop fruit. The word will uh, begin to uh, activate inside your spirit, man. You plant the word in your heart. Amen. Well, the kingdom... In what, uh, they're, they're explaining it now in a different way. They say, well, what other way can we explain this to you? It is like a very small seed. It is like a very small logos. It's like a very small word, in other words. You could put it this way. It's like getting one nugget from God. It's like getting one rhema word from God. One little word from God. You just get the right word, it'll change your life. You get one little word, one, I mean, I'm not talking about chapters. You get one word that God just speaks to you. The voice of God comes up and you just say, wow, I didn't see that. Or you look at the word of God and, and he just says, peace. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, just comes all over you. One little mustard seed, one little word, in other words, one little word. But when it is, uh, which is sown in the earth, sown in you, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. It's, it, it could be less than volumes on psychiatry, but how many know you could have volumes on psychiatry, but God just delivers you with one word? Hallelujah. One little mustard seed. Hallelujah. But when it is sown, it grows up. It grows up and becomes greater than all the other knowledge, herbs, and shoots out great branches. You are the branches. Come on, somebody. How many know you are now the branches of the tree of life? You are the branches. When you get the word of the wisdom of the tree of life inside you and you plant it firmly in your heart, you will develop and you will shoot forth like great branches. Not just branches, but great branches. Come on. You will shoot forth like great branches. Hallelujah. Well, that's just a coincidence, Pastor Jeff. I mean, it, shooting forward like a brand. No, this is what God's been saying the whole time. If you get one nugget, one word from God, you will shoot forth like great branches. Now, notice what it says. So that, <laughs> so that the fowls, now if you read the, sower, the, the parable of the sower, the, the fowls of the air are the demons. When, when Jesus translates it. So that the demons or the devils um, are now may lodge under, if I say under, the branches. 
Now, I know some translation, it says now uh, the, uh, the demons, the fowls are now among the branches. I'm here today to tell you in the Greek, the word under there literally means an inferior position. When you realize, you, when you get a hold of a word, when that word gets so deep in your spirit, you will shoot forth like great branches and the devil will be in an inferior position in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you begin to realize that you are the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Bless going in and bless going out. Because the word is good news. And it will set you free. It'll make you free. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are the branches. And you have been grafted into that olive tree. Now there is the fig tree represents Israel. The olive tree represents Israel. Uh, it, talking about the uh, fig tree is natural. Israel. The olive tree the oil is spiritual Israel. And when you are in him and shoot forth like great branches and you receive his word, you are grafted into the same tree. Even as the Jews, come on somebody, you are now grafted into the same covenant. The same, no, a better covenant. Hallelujah. Everything of, of Abrahamic's covenant. Now, there's been many covenants. The Adamic covenant, the Edemic covenant, the Noahic covenant, the Davidic covenant, the Mosaic covenant. Come on, somebody. They, they've been, you know, the Abrahamic covenant is what Jesus paid for. Jesus in his own blood. So we have a better covenant because now it is fulfilled, it is done, it is purchased. And it's purchased in his own blood. Come on, somebody. Now, how many know that when Jesus came to this earth, Jesus did not come from his father, Joseph? How many know it was a virgin birth? Well, how many know that, that he does not have the blood of Joseph? He has the blood of his heavenly father. He is the first man since Adam, and he is called the last Adam. Why was he the last Adam? Because he had to fulfill every single thing, everything, that the first Adam messed up. And he comes into this earth with perfect blood. He is the exact image of the Father. He is the exact image of Adam. He looked just like Adam. Come on. Adam walked, hallelujah, sinless. His blood was sinless, but because of the curse, it got tainted. Then Jesus comes on the scene through a virgin birth, and his blood now does not have the curse. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm preaching myself happy. <laughs> Amen. Go with me over here to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. How many love the word of God? John chapter 15, let's just start in verse 1. Jesus says, I am, I am the true vine. That word true there in the Greek literally means I am the original vine. He is the original vine of the tree of life. Somehow that vine has been, it got out of the garden. That vine has gone through every generation. And Jesus is the original vine, he says. I am the original vine. And my father is the husbandman. He says, every branch, say I'm a branch. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it brings forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except 
it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Come on, somebody. I am the vine. You are the branches. Hallelujah. I am the vine, Jesus says, and he said, you are the branches. Hallelujah. He is the original vine and we're grafted back into the tree of life. We were separated from that tree and we're back. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. And he, through his sinless life, came forth with sinless blood and did it all. Hallelujah. And fruit is the better things that the blood is speaking about. I'm going to end this morning in Luke chapter 23. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 23. And uh, let's start here in verse 16. I will therefore chastise Jesus and release him. For of necessity he must release one. Uh, Pilate says, uh, I must release one to them at the feast, the feast of Passover. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man and release us uh, to us Barabbas. They said, no, 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 you, you are not going to release Jesus to us at this feast. We don't want him. They said, release that criminal Barabbas. Now, how many know the name Barabbas? Anytime you see the word bar, it means son of. So, bar, this, you know, bar Jonah, bar. Well, uh, Barabbas or Abbas, he was son of a natural father. Jesus was the son of God. And that same question is, is there today. Who are you going to choose? Are you going to serve the one that, and I'm not talking about not just serving your daddy. I'm talking about if your daddy wasn't serving God, are you going to follow him or are you going to follow your heavenly father? There, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. And, and Jesus was the son of our heavenly father. Hallelujah. And they chose that day and they say, we choose the natural, the one who's the son of a natural father. That's not by accident. And there they were, and they chose Barabbas. Now, let's read on. And it says, um, Pilate, therefore willing to release Jesus, spoke again to them, spoke to them again. But they cried, saying, Crucify Jesus, crucify him. Go down here to. Uh, Verse 33. Now I want you to know that Jesus was nailed to a tree. Everybody say tree. Jesus was nailed to a tree. You say, well, how come they said Jesus was nailed to a tree? Well, back in the Hebrew... They didn't have a word for wood, necessarily. They just said tree, and that meant wood, that meant tree, that meant everything involved. But it's more than that. It's the original tree. It is the tree. And, and, and notice what happens here. Jesus is nailed to a tree. And they put upon him. I don't know if you can get a shot of this. They just, just lift it up. Do you see the crown of thorns? We have the largest crown of thorns on Route 66. People are traveling by and come pay money. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank the Good family, especially Rebecca, for the great Easter uh, uh, what display. Display. Amen. How many know that the crown of thorns, now know, in the curse... It came upon the ground, and the ground became thorns. Come on, somebody. And the ground became toil, and it became the curse. How many know 
Jesus took on the crown as king, but he didn't take on a kingly crown. He took on the crown of the curse. He took on the crown of the thorns. And when he took on the crown of the thorns, the curse, he took it all on. He took on everybody's sin. He took on probably the biggest crown of thorns. Come on, somebody. That's why we had to have a big crown here today. Amen. Wow. Verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, they crucified him. And the criminals, the thieves, one on the right hand and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Go down here to verse 39. And one of the thieves which were hung railed on him, saying, If you be the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, seeing that you are in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then Jesus said, and then he said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There's a thief on a tree on this side of him. There's a thief on this side of him. This thief, he says, today I will be with you in paradise. This thief was good. This thief on this side, he, he didn't say that to him. He was evil. On these two trees represent good and evil, and Jesus split good and evil right down the center. Becoming the tree of life in the garden of earth again. And if you're grafted into that tree, if you're grafted into the tree of life, you have life and that life more abundantly. Amen. The tree. And Jesus hung on that tree. Verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Today shall you be with me in paradise. And it was about the, uh, the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in two. And when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, how many know when it became dark? Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, our Heavenly Father turned His back to the sin on that tree. And in that moment, there was separation of Jesus and the Heavenly Father. Death, spiritual death, is what came on Adam. Spiritual death, how many know when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, they didn't die immediately. They did die spiritually immediately, separation. But then later on, natural death occurred. How many know that spiritual death happens first and it leads to natural death? Adam was to live forever. Jesus, in that moment on that cross, when he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he cried that out, he experienced spiritual death for us. He experienced separation from the Father so that we could be reconciled to the Father. There he hung upon that tree. There he hung upon that tree. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. And having thus done so, he gave up his spirit and died. Just to make sure, one of the soldiers took a spear and jabbed it in his side. The water and the blood poured out. 
<laughs> he didn't. He was lashed with these cat of nine tails to the point of being so marked you couldn't recognize. He, he was just solid blood to beat to a pulp. And then they took a spear up his side, making sure he was dead. You know, when I think of the 23rd Psalm, 23rd Psalm is such a blessing. Probably one of the greatest verses in the Bible. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, thy branch, it comforts me. Starting to see some things. There's a tree. And that tree is the tree of life. And that tree is Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we know, according to First Peter, that Jesus went down to paradise, just like he said he, to the thief. He said, I'll see you today in paradise. He went down for three days down into Abraham's bosom and preached. But First Peter says he also preached to the other side of the gulf into the pit, into hell. Three days preaching. Covered with your sin. But he was sinless. And because Jesus was sinless, it was illegal to keep him in hell. <laughs> and when he was finished preaching down there, he took the keys of hell and death. And he came up. Come on, somebody. Look at, look at chapter 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, every very, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And, and they entered in and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. How many know that Jesus, he wasn't there? He had already been risen. He already came out of that tomb. He already took captivity and led them out of Abraham's bosom. And he led them right out of there. But he made a pitch stop at the foot of the cross. And he gathered up the blood. And he took of that blood. How many know when he spoke to Mary, he said, you can't touch me yet. I have not yet ascended. And he took that blood and he brought it up. And he brought captivity up to heaven. And he put the blood on the mercy seat of heaven. And it's crying out. Come on, somebody. It's crying out forgiveness and blessing. And that blood is upon the mercy seat today. Hallelujah. And Jesus came back. This time, Mary can touch him. People can see him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now notice, mm. it says, And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed about this, behold. Now, <laughs> the, the napkin, that the piece of cloth that was put over his face, the shroud was just sitting there on the rock, but the, the napkin that was on his face was folded nicely and put down there on the stone. Now, a napkin, according to tradition, that napkin, if you're done at a feast, you take the napkin, you toss it down like that upon the plate, and that lets the people cleaning up, lets the servants, lets everybody know you're done. But if you fold your napkin nice and neatly like Jesus did, that means you're coming back. Come on, somebody. And he folded that nice and, and literally he took captivity up there and he came back. And he walked amongst everybody telling them, hallelujah, that he paid the price. He did it all. And there he was. 
Hallelujah. Seen of everyone. They touched his hands to see the the marks of the spikes and they they saw how he this is Jesus. He paid the price. Now notice what it says. It says, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed about this. Behold, two men, two angels, stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the, to the earth. And they said to them, Why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Jesus is alive. Come on, somebody. He has risen from the dead. Come on, somebody say, He is alive. He has risen. 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 He has risen.